George Jetson. <laughs> It's the Jetsons wall clock. This is an easy project anybody can make with limited tools and limited experience. If you'd like to make this one, check in the description box. I've included a template you can download and cut out all the pieces. I bought a new chair this week, a big recliner for the living room. And in the box were these hardboard panels for support. So I can attach my template to a piece of that just using some spray adhesive on the back. The trick to using spray adhesive is to spray it on your paper and let it dry for about 60 seconds or so, so it's just tacky. It'll be like, like a post-it note, <laughs> and then you can stick that to your wood and then it'll peel off easily. So I'm gonna cut out this inner part with a jigsaw. There are two different kinds of blades that a jigsaw will use. There's a T-shank and a U-shank. This is a U-shank blade and this is the T-shank blade. The T-shank has this little T-shape here that holds into the saw. My old Black & Decker jigsaw used to use the U-shank. I guess that's universal shank, whereas my new DeWalt Jigsaw uses these T-shank and I can tell you I far prefer the T-shank. It really stays in the these U-shank ones, they were always popping out of my saw. And maybe it was just my saw, I don't know, but <laughs> this has never fallen out. To sand down these inside corners, I use my drill press and these really inexpensive drum sanders. They come in different diameters. If you don't have a drill press, just use a regular drill. Well, the trigger on my drill doesn't lock down, but I can certainly clamp it down. And of course, you can just use a sheet of sandpaper too, but I do suggest putting it around some sort of a block so that you can get nice, even edges. So there's plenty of ways to sand wood without having to spend a lot of money or even take up a lot of space in a shop. And when you're satisfied with all the sanding, you can peel the template off. Definitely handy to have a workbench that you don't mind mangling. I really like to use these finishing sanders too. This is the Black & Decker Mouse. I've had it for years. It's real lightweight and it's great for small pieces. And you can also put a hand sander in a vise. With some rough sandpaper, I can shape wood like on my disc sander. Or if you have a handheld belt sander like this one, just clamp it down. I think the easiest way to sand this is just with a sheet of sandpaper. I picked up these round beads at the craft store, so they'll just fit on like that. I'm starting to lay everything out now and see what it's gonna look like. I've got two of these steel bars I bought this morning, and this is what's gonna hold it all together. I found this three quarter inch piece of pine already cut in a circle in my scrap bin, so I'm gonna use it because it's not really going to show and lay these rods out about how I like them and then mark them. In order to cut a couple of grooves in this wood, I'm just going to clamp it down and just start cutting it with a saw. And with a chisel, I can just start making a bunch of kerfs. So those two grooves will hold these two rods, about like that. I'm cutting one of these rods a little bit shorter with a hacksaw. This hole is for the clock. 
I spray painted these rods silver and I've set everything up about how I like it. So now I can epoxy those in. And I've cut another circle out of half inch MDF that I'm gonna glue on there. To cut up this dowel for the standoffs, I've got this really inexpensive miter box. It's just made out of plastic, but I've got it mounted to a board that I can clamp to my workbench. So to get nice square cuts, you just put your board inside the miter box and then use one of these kind of saws and hold it down and cut through. Rather than mix my own colors, I decided to buy these pre-made colors at the craft store. These are acrylic paints and they're just gorgeous. And I'm gonna epoxy on the clock face. And all these little pieces that don't support any weight, I can just hot glue them on. And I'll protect the whole thing by spraying it with a coat of spray lacquer. I'm gonna hang this from the wall using one of these sawtooth hangers. This is the clock mechanism. They sell these at craft stores. They don't cost very much and they're easy to install. They take one AA battery. So it just pops in through that hole that I made earlier. And then it comes with this nut to hold it in place. So this little piece unscrews from the top and then you install the hour hand first and the minute hand and it's got a shape on it that only fits one way so that it's lined up. And then you put this little screw on thing back. And if you wanna put the second hand on, it just pops on the top. Well, there it is. And remember, anybody can make this project with just basic tools and a little bit of creativity. <laughs> I'll talk to you next time.